Good afternoon, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Our gathering hymn is number 188, Creator Spirit by Whose Aid, 188. Spirit by whose aid the world's foundations first were laid. Alleluia, alleluia. Give us thyself that we may see the Father and the Son by thee.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. ever-living God, who will the Paschal mystery to be encompassed as a sign in fifty days, grant that from out of the scattered nations the confusion of many tongues may be gathered by heavenly grace into one confession of your name, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The whole world spoke the same language, using the same words. While the people were migrating in the east, they came upon a valley in the name of Shinard and settled there. They said to one another, Come. 
Let us mold bricks and harden them with fire. They used bricks for stones and bituminous for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky, and so make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered all over the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people had built. Then the Lord said, If now, while there are one people, all speak in the same language, they have started to do this. Nothing will later stop them from doing whatever they presume to do. Let us then go down there and confuse their language so that no one will understand what another one says. Thus the Lord scattered them from all over the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the speech of all the world. It was from that place that he scattered them all over the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruit of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. 
Now hope that sees is not hope, for who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit too comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is, in the, is the intention of the Spirit because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. As scripture says, rivers of living water shall flow from within him who believes in me. He said this in reference to the Spirit. But those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no Spirit yet because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Living waters will flow from within him. He was speaking of the Spirit, John says. Tomorrow in the first reading of the Acts of the Apostles, we will hear that there was a mighty wind that shook the place where they were at prayer, Mary and the disciples. And the wind was a symbol of that Spirit. Living water, wind. And fire, tongues of fire parted and came to rest on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit didn't just hover, didn't just visit, didn't just surround, but entered in. The Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, the intensity of relationship between Father and Son that envelops us in the very life of God, the Spirit that made us children in baptism, the Spirit whose gifts were sealed in confirmation, the Spirit who continues to guide us on our journey as we seek to be disciples and to make disciples as Jesus commanded us. You will be clothed with power from on high when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. What we are to do with what we are to receive once we're clothed with this power from on high. We can't get our minds around the Spirit of God, and so we talk about it in images. But what appropriate ones. Because they all speak of 
the diversity that the Spirit of God brings into our life. Water. Water cleanses. And he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven, those you retain are retained. The water of the Spirit that cleanses us from sin. Water helps something to survive. Without water, we die. Without water, vegetation withers up. There's no fruitfulness. Water sustains. The Spirit sustains that life of God within us. That water refreshes and enables us to get up and continue the journey. Water. That which sustains life. That which cleanses. That which refreshes. And wind. You open up the windows in your house on a day with a good breeze. What happens? Sometimes that breeze comes in and it blows and you go, what's all this? Geez, I gotta dust this thing. And so the wind comes in sometimes and shows us what's been neglected. Wind. Open up that window and let it blow through and unless something is firmly anchored and is, has a support it can easily be toppled over. The knickknacks, the stuff. The Spirit of God topples those unnecessary things from our life if we're willing to live in that Spirit. Those things that get in the way, those things that are not really rooted, that are not really firm, they topple and can be easily dispersed. Spirit is wind. One can row their boat all they want. But what does a sailor do as well? Equipped his boat with good sails. And he can have those sails all in place. He can even be ready to put his own effort into the rowing. But what's the one thing he can't do? He can't conjure up the wind. The wind blows where it wills. You hear the sound it makes. You can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, we're told of the Spirit of God. But when he makes sure that he has the sails and he places them properly and he does his own effort to move himself forward, then when that wind does come, it fills those sails. It fills what he, he provided. And he moves a swift path. And so it is with cooperation with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God does not violate our free will. The Spirit of God does not replace our efforts, our bringing to the work of discipleship, the adventure of life, that which we've been given. It is the Spirit of God who fills those sails. It is the Spirit of God who moves us forward. The Spirit of God is like fire. When we know that spirit within us, when we consult that spirit of God, we have the warmth, we have the comfort, we have the assurance when we are doing that which is just and right, even if it's ice cold around us. Just as the fire in the hearth can warm us in the middle of the coldest day of winter, or the coldest day of spring. And so that spirit of God within us means it doesn't matter if we've got the warm fuzzies from all those around us. If we're basking in their pride, we could be living in their sneers, and it could be cold as ice. But we will not be deterred because of the fire burning within us. Fire purifies. It tests metal and shows its good worth. These are just a few, as we glance, indicators of what it means to live by the Spirit. On this Pentecost, when we celebrate the outpouring of that Spirit, we celebrate the birthday of the church, when God enters intimately into the life of his people, that they might bring him to the world, not trusting in themselves, but in that Spirit. And brothers and sisters, if we try to do that work ourselves, we'll grow tired, we won't persevere, we'll look for applause and when it isn't there we'll give up, we'll get discouraged 
If we try to lead others to Jesus Christ by throwing them onto guilt trips or trying to beat them over the head, we'll never get anywhere. Because do you notice what Jesus did? The way he planned it for his disciples is the way it has to be for us if we are going to be effective witnesses. He didn't ascend and say, okay, go on, go out there, do this, do that, say this, go over there. He didn't send them to action. He sent them to go to the upper room and pray and be open to the Spirit. Only after prayer, only after being receptive to what God wanted to give them, then was the call to action. And I think we make that mistake sometimes. We make decisions, we open our mouth, we try to accomplish things, but we don't do it with prayer. We do it on our own and we hope God is impressed. And oftentimes we fail, or we don't even know it. We don't even get the results that God had in mind. And we get depressed. And we learn from this Pentecost story that yes, we are sent, all of us, where we work, where we live, in our families, our homes, the ups, the downs, we are sent for action. Not to be Catholic couch potatoes, but we are not sent to just be doing things. We are sent first to come to the Lord. Receive his spirit, discern his will, and then be his witnesses wherever he sends us. The Pentecost gift, the Pentecost challenge. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified to Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Trusting in his spirit within and among us, we bring our needs. For all who have ministered to God's people, especially for fathers David Harris and Matthew Schultz, Schultz, as they begin their priestly ministry, may they be always responsive to the Holy Spirit's power and grace to be strong, loving, and wise, seeking to serve always with a shepherd's heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hold back in fear, May the Holy Spirit move us all to be open to God's call and freely use the gifts and talents that we've been given for the good of one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will graduate from our St. Patrick's School this week and for the Spirit's guidance in the days ahead as we transition to become St. Patrick's Academy at the end of this month, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, may they know the healing power of the Spirit in their struggles. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of one another and for the repose of the souls of all who have preceded us in death, especially Stanley and Evelyn Orzenkowski, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all things through Christ our Lord. Please join together in singing number 417, One Spirit, One Church. 
417. With you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by anointing them with your only begotten Son. And the same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of one faith. Therefore, overcome with passful joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy and welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, form of divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. of our love. 
Let us pray. May these gifts we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same Spirit, whom you wondrously poured out on your apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Please join together in singing number 182, Go Make of All Disciples, 182. Go make of all disciples, we hear the call of Lord that comes from Until each life's vocation 
Accenture.